So today we're taking a look at one of those tools that you maybe never thought about, never even knew existed, but then you go and use it and you say to yourself, how did I get along without this thing? So the tool we're looking at today is the Dremel Moto Saw. Now I'll talk about how this thing sets up and then we're gonna do some slicing and some dicing with it. We'll even talk about some of the things that come with it and some of the things that do not. Now we got a couple pieces of scrap plywood here, but let's talk about what this is intended for. In my opinion, I would say anybody that's doing craft work or even fine woodworking, I think this would work really well for just about anybody that messes around or works with wood. When I first seen it, I was basically saying to myself, eh, it's kind of small and what's it really going to be able to do? It's basically a smaller type of scroll saw. But I was actually kind of surprised with what I was able to accomplish with this saw. Now, as far as it goes with use of it, let's just get this out of the way here. There is a little bit of a vibration. You can see it bouncing up and down, which is normal because of the way the neck is designed. It doesn't throw you off. It doesn't really mess with you too much when you're trying to cut. You can also adjust that speed down, so it does help. You can control it a little bit better, but I'm just letting you know, you can see it does have some flex with the neck. Now, even though there was some bouncing, one thing I will tell you is this thing turns on a dime. I was really able to do any cut that I wanted to with this saw. Didn't have any issues. If I adjusted that speed control, it was okay, but did a really, really nice job cutting. Now you're gonna get a bunch of different blades. You're gonna get some that's a little bit wider for maybe a thicker cut. You're also going to get some that are thinner, maybe for some more fine detail work. But again, the cut quality is really, really good on this. If you wanted to, you could adjust that shoe. It's a safety guard. All you got to do is push down on that blue button right there, and then it'll lift up. If you don't push down on the blue button, well, it's not going to lift up. That's a safety feature. And then if you want to bring that down to your workpiece, all you got to do is push down on it. As far as the blade goes, it's pretty simple to take that blade out, put a new one in, but I did find it to be a little bit frustrating at times. Basically what you have to do is you have that lever right there, you're gonna flip it over, that's gonna loosen it, you pull up and then you pull down and then you just kinda pull out and yeah, it's kind of a pain. And one of the bigger issues that I had with this is, well, I'll show you towards the end of the video. So that's all the bigger those blades are. And again, you can get the different diameters. You can get ones that are a little bit more heavy duty for a thicker piece of wood, but that's basically it. You're gonna throw them in and once you do and you lock them down, they aren't going anywhere. Now, as far as it goes with assembly on this, it was pretty simple. I was a I guess little you could bit say nervous just because there's so much plastic on this. There's really no metal at all. But after using it for about a week I didn't really have any concerns with it and it's pretty rugged as far as it goes with hooking it up on a workbench or a table that was really nice now another disappointing thing and you can see right here is there is no light on this saw so you're gonna have to have some ambient lighting around you already or set something up that you can see but the shadow that it casts while well, it is pretty significant and you might have an issue being able to see that piece that you were trying to cut. Now, I just wanna show you another view with that blade. Again, once you get that in there, it will not go anywhere. It's pretty secure. Once you tighten it down, it sort of just sucks it up in and then just pulls it tight. So really did not have any issue with blades breaking or anything, the blades are actually pretty good. Now there is a clamping mechanism that you can use. You can put this on a lot of different surfaces. I have them on my workbench and if I need to bring it to another workbench, all I have to do is clamp it down, it hooks up. You also have a dust port right here that you can hook a vac up. And you also have a couple different speeds on this Dremel. Now the adjustment speed wheel goes from one to six. The problem is, is that it really wasn't efficient on anything else but the highest setting of six unless you were just trying to clean up an edge or just had to go through something very very soft well there's really no benefit of running it that slow and really i'm just trying to get the negatives out of the way the last negative that i had with this saw is that you can actually use a miter gauge but it does not come with it it comes with a really heavy duty case it comes with everything else you need the blades and everything but you know you don't have that miter gauge all right let's do some cutting here and we'll talk about specs as well now the throat depth on this you're looking at 9.84 inches it's 120 volts you're only looking at 2.4 pounds for this machine 
you can see you bring that shoe that guard down if you wanted to put it right over top of your workpiece it is adjustable and it works really nice it's gonna help you save your finger and you're also looking at about 1500 up to 2250 cuts per minute now we have eh, it's probably a one by one and a half and we're just gonna notch it out we're just gonna bring it right through the saw and see what it does So you can see you can make really, really good cuts with this. And that was turned up about halfway. And if you're not holding your, your material down, it is going to jump on you. I can't do that because I got a camera in my way. But just to let you know, you have to hold those work pieces secure because this thing will bounce. Now, one of the best features about this, now, if you're doing molding, if you're doing fine detail work, if you're doing something like arts and crafts or whatever, this saw is really cool because the, the workspace is actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be. The way that neck is shaped, you can actually get some pretty nice sized pieces in there. Measuring from the blade to the back of that neck, you're looking at about 10 and a half inches. So that's pretty nice for this size saw. But here's what we were talking about a little bit earlier. If I were to drill a hole or maybe I had some type of material, I took it off my CNC or something, I could drill a hole if that hole is already there. I could take that blade off, I could throw this on just like a scroll saw and run it right down through that hole and then cut out from the inside. So you can do some really detailed work and it's actually pretty quick and simple to do. The blade, however, you know, you have to get it in that slot just perfectly and it can become an annoyance, but if you lift up on that wood, you should be able to see what you're doing pretty good. Now you can see because of that gap, that neck, the way it's formed like that, that gooseneck almost, it really allows you to bring those corners up and around. And again, you can turn on a dime with this. If you can hold that material down, it, it really just does a good job. It is pretty smooth. This is not the best material out there. It's not super flat, so that's also causing some issue. But I'm telling you, for a little saw like this, I, I really was not expecting much, but it does a pretty good job. There are definitely corks with this. I wish there was a light. I wish they provided the miter. I wish they provided a couple Mountain Dews, you know, but you don't get everything you want. You know, you do get the really nice case. You do get everything that you see here at a pretty good price. And if you're a crafts or if you're making, you know, projects for woodworking, this is a really cool tool that you can kind of throw in your shop and you won't even notice that it is there. And it really does add that versatility you know to the woodworking shop so the blades you know they're not the easiest to bring in and out but they're not the worst either it only takes i don't know a few seconds you know to release them and then put them back in but all in all it, it does a pretty good job for what i'm looking for it's not heavy duty you know this is not something that i would say you know if you're industrial or if you're you know making some really crazy woodworking projects this is more fine detailed woodworking and i really think it complements the cnc work that i do I just think it's a cool tool, so I definitely want you, um, you know, wanted you to check it out. So let me know what you think in the comment section. What do you think about this saw? What could be improved? What do you like about it? You know, do you think it's something that you would use? It would be greatly appreciated if you can smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any other tool reviews. And come say hi to us on the Instagram page at Tool Review Zone. I appreciate you watching. And with that, we'll be back with more videos soon.